If you enjoy tapping the brake line bite, you'll love Fishhead's next session as John reveals an overlooked pattern for catching walleye on the contours. Just pulled this rod out. It drags a little looser than it probably should be. Feels like a decent fish. I just made a change. I couldn't get fish to react. I could, well, and I shouldn't say that. I could get them to react, but I wasn't getting the fish to react the way I wanted them to earlier. So what I did is I just made a quick change. I just switched to a quiver spoon. And the reason I switched to this quiver spoon is it's a totally different action. I just wanted to put something down there that was totally different than what I was fishing before. And a lot of times that'll trip their trigger. So here's the deal. I started with the glow spoon and that glow spoon, man, I'll tell you what, I've caught more fish on that spoon than any other spoon that Lindy makes. But there are days and times of the day where I'm gonna switch away from that spoon and I'm gonna go to something more subtle in any bait. I don't care what bait it is. There's gonna be days where they're gonna come in, look at it and leave. They need something different. And today, you can tell already, might be one of those days. That's a beautiful walleye right there to get going with. But what it took was I had to make a change. And what I did is I switched over to this quiver spoon because here's the thing about the quiver spoon. The glow spoon's a little bit more aggressive. It's got that brighter light. It's making it so they can see it. And it's, it's a little faster, little, you know, there's just a little bit more up and down to it. Where you look at a quiver spoon that triggered this walleye right here. We're gonna eat him tonight. This quiver spoon, Every time I jig this one, here's what the quiver spoon does. It just flutters back down because it's made of a very lightweight material. So every time I jig this thing up, it rolls sideways and flutters back down, it's slower. So on those days when you're looking at fish that are giving you a look, but they're not finishing it, that's the time to switch over to a bait like this because here's what it does. It gives them longer to look at it while it's falling. And anytime a bait is falling, that's when it's in that vulnerable position. The position that they wanna feed on a natural minnow in is when it's in that falling motion. It's not when it's darting away, it's when it stops after that dart or falls. Well, this quiver spoon gives you exactly that. This is an awesome bait. Comes in three different sizes, 16th, 8th, and quarter. And man, I'll tell you what, just a, a whole bunch of great colors. They all, you know, they glow. We got metallic backs on them. So you either get metallic gold or you get metallic chrome. And I'll, I'll tell you what, it gives you everything. It gives you a flash. It gives you the color. And yet it gives you that slow drop. And sometimes that slow drops the ticket. That fish right there, I mean, now the next fish through, he might gobble that glow spoon up or a glow streak or a rattling flyer spoon, something more aggressive. But every now and then when you see a fish come through and he gives you that look, but he doesn't finish it, switch over to something with a totally different action like this one, like I did here, because I'll tell you what, that made all the difference. I mean, that quick, boom, got him. Got him. <laughs> Feels like a pretty decent fish. Yeah, it's definitely another good one. Man, it's funny how it works. When these fish, they just roam through these areas. And you know, you, you sit and you think to yourself when you're fishing basin, and I'll, I'll tell you, you know, let's talk about the location. Oh yeah, good walleye. Ooh, stuck on the bottom of the hole. Oh no, get out of there. Get out of there. There we go, got him turned, <laughs> look at that. He got in my transducer, and then, look at that. We got lucky there. Awesome fish, look at that. Great eye. Here's the thing. A lot of times you look at these basin areas, that's another great fish. And you think to yourself, how do I decide in an area like this where I should be fishing? Man, that's a great fish, we're stacking them up. They're good now. Here's the thing, here's what I do. When I left Zippel this morning, I'm out in front of Zippel Bay. And what this is, is it's just a basin area and it's just slow drop offs. And it just keeps working its way out into deep water, okay? Up further, you know, closer to shore, you've got your sand stuff. And as you keep going, it gets softer and softer and softer. But here's what I'm looking for. When I'm looking at that map chip, and I've got all these lines on that map chip, all these contour lines. 
One of the things that's really, really important to me is finding irregularities, but I'm looking for areas that are wider, areas of a certain depth that are just wider, because what I'd like to call it is like a mini flat. If I can find that mini flat, all of a sudden, here's what happens. I know fish can get hung up on that spot and just stay there and meander around. If I'm just fishing a tight break and it's just going you know, down like that, nothing steep out here, but as steep as you can be out here, there's nothing to hold them. But if I can find that area that I would call a mini flat where it just gets wider and maybe there's an irregularity like I'm sitting in right now, here's what you find out. These fish, they'll stay put. And if you can get them to stay put, what's gonna happen is throughout the day, these fish are meandering through. You might see the same fish come and go on your graph multiple times throughout the day. But if you're sitting on just a contour line, followed by another one, followed by another one, everything's the same, you're kind of waiting for fish to just pass through because there's nothing to hold them. So look for those flat areas. If you can find those wider spots, what I call a mini flat, I'm going to tell you, it can make a big, big difference. And, and when you look around, a lot of times you just see guys set up in general anywhere they, they can find a spot. But when I come out and do this kind of thing, I'm looking for that irregularity. I'm looking for that exact spot because if I can find that exact type of spot, I really feel like fish are going to stay put there for a longer period of time throughout the day. Got him. Feels like a decent fish. I don't know that he's a giant, but feels like he could be a decent one. Oh yeah, look at that. Really nice sauger. Perfect. You know, that's the neat thing about Lake of the Woods. You can throw a couple of these saugers in too. I've caught some saugers today. Boy, he just inhaled that. Look at that. He just ate that whole quiver spoon. But I've caught some saugers today, but they were on the smaller side and I figured I'd just kind of wait it out and see if we bumped into a couple better ones. And that one there, it's definitely on the better side. That's probably a 14 inch sauger. You know, they're just a skinnier fish. Man, they taste just as good as any walleye you can, you can catch. <laughs> That's cool. I always like adding a couple saugers to that pail. You don't get to do that in a lot of places. But Lake of the Woods allows you to do it and it makes it so you can take six fish home because you can have any combination of six fish here as long as no more than four walleyes. There he is. That feels like he might be a little bit better fish. You could tell the way this one was coming up that he was a little bit better. You know, you're going through a number of fish here and that's one of the things that happens is when you're going through numbers of fish, all of a sudden you get to know exactly what's happening down there. And I mean, I can tell you that I pretty much know what's happening. When I see a better fish coming, holy smokes, you can tell. <laughs> I mean, that walleye's a better fish than what we've been messing with. There's been a lot of saugers here, a lot of small walleyes. But you know what, fish like that one, they meander through too. And it's so often we find ourselves saying, well, you know, maybe I should move. Lots of small fish here. Maybe I should bail out of here. But if you do that 17 inch walleye right there, he sneaks by you. And what happens is these fish, they all get congregated together. When they, when they get in those certain depths where they're feeding, they all get congregated together. But sometimes I believe that part of what happens is you end up in a scenario where the little fish are so aggressive that that's what you find yourself catching over and over and over. And sometimes you just gotta believe that there's better fish there too and stick it out. And that's what I've done here. I mean, you know, I've only fished for about an hour and a half this morning, but the amount of time I've put in has put me in a position of saying, well, you know, should I think about moving? I'm catching a lot of small fish. Well, here's the thing. I don't know that moving's gonna make any difference for me at this point in time. Right now, it's just triggering the right fish. And that seems to be the way to do it because there's a lot of different things you can do. But by the time you make those moves, you might find out that you are better off just staying put and weeding through those fish that you're catching and actually having fun with them, enjoying the fact that you've got action and waiting for those right fish to come in. And when you see a fish coming in like that one right there, I mean, I knew that was a better fish. There he is, hit it. There he is, got him. Got him. <laughs> That's one thing that I think is so neat about that quiver spoon, feels like a pretty good one, is the ability to fish it. Oh yeah, look at that great eye. Come here, buddy. Look at that. It's the ability to fish it in different ways. You know, that fish, he came in, he just didn't hit it, just jumping up and down. So all I did 
is I just started dancing it, just kind of, hence the name, quiver. I was just dancing it, just kind of letting it just kind of sit and do this. Man, sometimes that can make all the difference. Barely had them too. Got lucky on that fish. Another great fish. What a great way to wrap up a day. That's four walleye limit. And I'll tell you what, it's been just a ton of fun sitting here catching these fish. And this is what you can do on early ice on Lake of the Woods. But the big thing is coming out here, finding those right spots, having a kind of an open mind on any given day too as to what they're going to want and need to bite. And, you know, as soon as I switched over to this quiver spoon, kind of slowed that presentation down, gave them a different look, we started catching more fish. Keep that in mind next time you're out. You know, I mean, this is one of the greatest destinations in the entire ice fishing world, Lake of the Woods. In fact, it might be number one when it really comes down to it. And no matter what you get for pressure, no matter what you get for time of the year, you know, cold fronts, warm fronts, snow, whatever it may be, there's always fish here to catch between the saugers and the walleyes. And, and I'll tell you what, you put together a day like we have today, that quiver spoon, it, it actually really got the job done. I don't know that I would have caught as many fish had I not switched to that slower presentation today. All said and done, you can come here and fill a pail just like that. That's awesome. Look for those spots, those little spots, those mini flats, and then have a variety of presentations with you and you'll be able to get them caught. That's awesome.